Let's go ahead and get started and we'll let folks come in as uh, they need and want. Um, I know that a couple of you said that you are having busy days, so you, you might not be able to get through all of it, all of the material that just passed over the last four hours. Um, I always love to trust in divine timing and right timing. So just know that you're gonna find that whenever you need it. And hopefully uh, several of you have been able to invoke the directions. But I wanted to start with just a very basic version of that for all of us to bring us all um, onto the same page. And also um, there's one more step that you'll see that we need to do to, to, to fully invoke the circle, which is to um, seal the circle. So Let's begin just by centering. Take a couple nice deep breaths. As you exhale, just let that exhalation clear you out. Inhale, come into your body, come into the gathering, come present. Exhale, anything that's distracting, just let it go. One more time, breathing in and exhale through your mouth. So I'm gonna invite you to, you can stay seated or wherever you're watching this, or you can also physically turn to face the direction that we're going to address right now. If, if you choose to stay physically seated in the same place, just when you're closing your eyes, you can visualize your, yourself making that turn. All that's really necessary is for us to invoke it in our, in our um, mind's eye. That'll be the charge of energy. But if you also want to turn to face the directions, you can. So we're going to begin by um, addressing the direction of the east, which is the direction that the sun shines. For me, that's directly behind where my laptop is right now. So I'm going to do the virtual version of um, addressing this direction. So closing your eyes and just imagining yourself turning to face the direction of the sunrise or actually physically turning to face that direction. This direction is the direction of air. So maybe you can visualize or even feel the breeze that's gently blowing. The archangel for this direction is the Archangel Raphael, and the color is golden yellow. So often it works here to imagine a sunrise. And I mentioned in one of the videos that I often envision the angels as these columns of light, kind of as if you know your body has that um, toroidal shape. There's this beautiful column of golden light just out in the distance to the direction of the east. And as you're turning to face this direction, there's many more totem animals and elementals and gemstones that we're gonna kind of just leave it simple right now. That's all the materials there, but just allow your, yourself to address, commune, face the direction, feel the energy of yellow, feel the energy of the air element. And these very simple things are so powerful, so sacred. And then we're going to turn, we're gonna take a, a quarter turn in the clockwise direction and we're going to either in our mind's eye or actually you can physically turn your body to face the direction of the south. So just one quarter clockwise turn to face south. Archangel Michael, the element fire, the color red. You might see that, that columnar toroidal shape, beautiful red column as the archangel. And just commune and invoke the element fire. Fire's especially relevant for this summer solstice and for the solar eclipse. We'll get to that in a second, but just, just spend some time really addressing, invoking, connecting with all of these energies. And then when you're ready, take another quarter clockwise turn to face the direction of the west where the sun sets. West is Archangel Gabriel, the color blue, the element of water. 
So really connect to the energy, the intelligence of water to maybe see that, that beautiful blue column of light off in the distance. I often like to just imagine the ocean where you could see above and below the ocean and just feel the mist of the waves. Let's take another quarter clockwise turn now to face the direction of the north. North is Archangel Uriel. The element is earth. The colors are either burnt orange or brown and beautiful rich green or olive green and black. So some variation of brown, green and black are the colors. So as you invoke Archangel Uriel, just imagine that pillar, that column of light containing all three of those colors. And what came through for our retreat was the, the earth beneath us and also the trees that surround us and all the, the vegetation and the natural life that earth supports. So just spend a few moments with your eyes closed, connecting your consciousness and energetically invoking that direction. So that's as far as we got with the independent materials on, the, on this retreat. And we're gonna take one more uh, quarter clockwise turn and we're gonna turn right back to where we started, which is back to the element air, back to the direction of the west. And as we take that one final turn in your mind's eye or physically right back to where you started, imagine that that's when this, this circle, this sacred circle sort of activates. And the, the really meaningful thing to note is it's you, it's your consciousness that's creating this circle. One of the things that we're also remembering is that instead of, we've been taught things are outside of us. We've been taught to go outside of ourselves for the answers, for things. And one of the things we're remembering is we have it all within us. So all you're needing to do is take your consciousness and create that circle and feel it sort of spring to life. And we're gonna just let it be with us for this final closing um, part of our time together. And it's interesting to note that the, the ancient symbols for, um, I, know, I know for sure it's Celtic and Druidic, I would, would imagine, you know, solstice was celebrated by ancient Egyptian cultures by the Aztecs in Mexico, by the Chinese, by the Chumash Indians in California, and by the indigenous people of Europe that we were sort of chatting about earlier today, the Celts, the Druids, and there was many other tribes and peoples who have inhabited there. They all knew of this holiday. And so the, the, the symbol for solstice, at least in Celtic and Druidic culture, one of them was a, this, a spiral expanding outward because the sun's energy has just been expanding outward, expanding outward, expanding outward. And then for the winter solstice, it's the sun's energy going inward on that spiral. But the spiral energy is also the symbol of the goddess. Um, for those of you who will take the future goddess course or who have taken the past one, that very simple uh, symbol of the circle is the symbol of also not only solstice, but the goddess. And it's interesting to note the convergence of these things. You know, I've, I, I teach energy work and healing and one of the ancient symbols for bringing in energy is to, if you're in the Northern hemisphere, um, draw in, in, in ether or in space, a, a clockwise circle, clockwise Northern hemisphere, this, this spiral brings in energy, counterclockwise releases energy. So we have this heightened period of energy right now. This um, can feel very intense for some. And really what I see is happening is that our bodies, we're light, we're energy. We have a light body. We're breathing and taking in consciously the lightest day of the year. So that means that every single meridian in our energy body, every single chakra, not just the seven that we know, you know, we have hundreds of chakras even in our hands, all the ways that we have a light body are being opened, expanded, and activated on this day. And especially with the, the solar eclipse. And 
you know, truth be told, some of this, this is new. This has never happened before, much like the state of the world has never been this way. So this is all, it can feel intense, but it also can feel very um, good. And, and this gets us back to, I forget who asked the question when we were doing that naughty Shodhana breathing at the start and I had you guys breathe deeply and somebody said, is that a release? And I, what came through is kind of like, yes, but everybody's different. The same thing is the case for, for this, which is, um, everyone's going to feel this a little bit differently so it could feel and also it's worth noting that these things happen it's kind of cuspy where today right now at 245 i believe or 243 was actually quote unquote the solstice but in my experience especially even with astrology there's this there's this lead time that it, you might have already been experiencing a lot of these energies and then there's also a lag time and it's kind of a week on one side and a week on on another side so we're standing right at the middle of it right now and so you might have already felt something super intense. You might have already felt um, something very beautiful and, and they can be both. So there's this cleanse aspect that's happening. So if there is any um, intense energies that are coming through, um, it could be something kind of disconcerting, that's okay. Um, that's part of, just trust that that's part of your letting go process that we're going through this release and we're going through this upgrade. And so the upgrades are kind of also this energized. We feel like our, you know, we have, we're, we're experiencing our gifts more than ever before. And we feel like this kind of euphoria. And so first know that your gifts are being magnified. That's just the case. And then second, know that whatever's in the way is also up. We got, we got to get through the muck in order to get to the good stuff, right? So, and as I mentioned before, first we do ourselves and then we're able to do this thing that where we're really able to serve others. So this eclipse and this solstice especially are this kind of like mark in the sand or something where we get to really take stock and know that we're simultaneously cleansing and clearing and receiving massive influx of light literally light from the sun and sometimes i see it as just codes of light or ways of being and knowing and doing and existing that are upgraded so when we left i mentioned and we were really deeply into this idea of the intention to remember and our intention to remember the divine feminine and the divine feminine is mother earth to be in right relations with the divine feminine with mother earth and so us gathering in this sacred space with this circle i want us to also bring that once again i don't want us to she wants us to <laughs> um so let's just take a moment to as we've come together to learn and grow and remember what all of this is all about. Let's set the intention together right now for remembering, for being the embodiment of divine feminine, whether or not we're male or female, ideally we're all half. And so that's why everybody can play here and it's all good. We're just seeking that reintegration. So just because it's just like with invoking the circle, all that's needed is your consciousness. All that's needed is your intention. We're that powerful as energetic beings. So just kind of go inside and set that intention. Mm, and I'm getting the other part of this solstice. So we've been on a, we've already been on a really uh, accelerated 2020 has been a super accelerated path for release. I hope that I'm sure we can all agree on that. <laughs> There's a lot that's happening where we're, we're really being motivated, motivated, and we're still, we're still in these times of massive release is what I'm seeing. So this doesn't mean uh, they're kind of showing me, this doesn't mean that it's over and we get to take off our hat and go sit on the couch and we get to, you know, enjoy our life, but also, um, we're going to continue to be able to have, on the one hand, it's release. On the other hand, it's upgrade. You know, so if, so if there's stuck energy and it's heavy, the new light stuff can't come in. Um, so the more we, um, what I'm getting is allow, like surrender. The more we just kind of watch the flow of energy, 
and trust it, even if it's not what we've planned. I kind of like to think about it as doors opening and closing. There's no need to push right now. And really what I'm, what's coming through is that if we resist, if we're too much in our heads about it, in our linear heads about the, the next uh, six lunar cycles, that's where the challenge is gonna come. And I think we can all even relate to the, the COVID experience has been very unique and we've learned that there are tremendous opportunities here. Um, there's also extreme hardship. And the more we release, the more we allow whatever's happening and just take responsibility for ourselves, that is the, the path to massive um, lightening and expanding so so we're also still in a time to let go we're in this time of excitement and euphoria and big gifts and great things and also we're not done so i want to share a quote with you guys next this do 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 so this is a cool saying it did not come from the same Celtic individual that I was mentioning um, in our previous, but I've done a, a little bit of training with a couple different indigenous elders. I think this one is um, North American. I love it. May the children of mother earth awaken and remember. May everything we do be about returning to right relations with ourselves and with each other, with mother earth, our home. In the way of our ancestors, we honor the turning. So it's interesting to consider, and you know, we just did a whole full circle turn. You know, natives and ancient populations saw everything in cycles. And in the goddess course, we learned about the cycle of the maiden mother crone. That's a, that's a triad of super powerful energy. And so we're in a death rebirth. We're in a death time. We're in a death so as to rebirth time and this invocation right here is really helping us to see that everything's already in balance and the turning the, the quote-unquote turning is something that you know they state kind of um bluntly and clearly as something that is a part of the natural process of things you know it's kind of like a a forest must every once in a while um burn and that's also part of the turning. So let's see where to go next. I think we should touch on, since we're talking about this, you know, I mentioned that solstice was this time of fire. Let's go to fire next. So we've um, met the element fire. Also, Solstice is known as, you know, it's Stonehenge and all over that area, they lit things on fire, they celebrated, they were dancing, they were singing. And so part of this fire is like the fire of celebration, but it's also, I think, really potently right now for us, the fire of transformation, because we have this, this solar eclipse happening in sync with summer solstice. And that solar eclipse is called, is known as the ring of fire. The, the moon eclipses the sun just perfectly so that there's a ring of fire melting down so as to be reborn. So let's take a moment to connect with the element fire. Fire can be a little bit scary for some folks because it is a little bit scary if you're near someone, uh, one of them that's big. <laughs> there's a lot of heat and there's a lot of transformation, but also there's so much power. That's how they made pots and that's how you know, metallurgy was developed and all the fire is literally transformative and we need it. So I invite you to close your eyes for a moment and re return to the element of fire if you were able to, to access that part of the course today. Otherwise, just greet this image, greet the energy of fire. Notice how it sets with you. Notice your relationship to it. Notice how you feel about it. Notice if there's anything it wants to share with you about what it's really up to in your life.
And we're going to do two things. We're going to allow this sort of communion with the element fire because that is really a lot of the energy of today. And we're going to connect back to our heart, that, that flame that rests within our heart or that beautiful golden light. It's both our heart center. So let the image of fire just, you know, dance in front of you and then come back into your energetic and your physical body. And as you breathe in, breathe into your heart, bring light into your heart from this peak moment of solstice. As you breathe out, send that light out, breathe energy out. Two more times, just like that, just as we started today, breathe in, call in light into your heart, breathe in through your nose and exhale through your mouth and send out light. Breathe in light and send out light. And then connect to the flame, the fire, the element fire that's right in front of you. Inhale, see if you're willing to welcome that flame into your heart. And I know in Christianity, the, the flaming heart of Jesus is a thing that actually is a magical portal that that image is po pointing us to. So you can invite the, the flame in front of you into your heart and feel it just sort of light up. And then as you exhale, you can send the light and the flame back out. And we'll do that two more times, breathing in. Breathing into your heart, the flame that's in front of you. Take it in and then as you exhale, send it back out to the flame that's in front of you. Breathing in. And breathing out. And now the question that's coming to mind is what are you ready to release for transformation? Personally, maybe something you're carrying for the collective, what are you ready to let go of? It might be a little bit subtle. It might be a, a habitual pattern of thinking or being it's certainly not the type of thing that I have to stop drinking coffee. It's more profound than that. So just notice, even if you can't bring words to it, it, for a lot of us, I think it's a way of being in the world that we're being invited to release. But each of us is different too. So if that's not for you, that's okay. And so we're going to, this is a little mini snapshot of something from the Heart Alchemy course. We're going to use the flame in our heart to transform that, to, to sort of burn it up and create more space for something. So whether you can put words to what it is you want to release or it's just a feeling, um, a way of being, whatever that heaviness is, whatever the thing that you sense is kind of keeping you stuck, Maybe it's just still an aching question. If you're ready to let it go, call it into the light of your heart right now. And your heart is now this big flame. And notice as soon as it, this heaviness comes into your heart, your heart knows what to do. It's like an inferno. It just instantly, poof, turns it into light. And as you breathe out, send that light out in all directions. Breathing in. Imagine in your field, whatever heaviness that you're feeling that you're ready to transform, call it in, just kind of bring it into your heart. As soon as it comes into that flame, as soon as it meets that flame, immense light. Exhale, send that light out. Again, breathing in. Call any remaining heaviness just into your heart. Your heart is that powerful. And then breathe out, send out light in all directions. So once again, this is something that is within you. This isn't something we have to go look at. This is just a very inside journey. But when we do the inside work, did you notice how that we were able to send light out in all directions? That means that the tree behind me got a little hug and all the other trees in front of me got a little hug. And I'm so glad that I was able to do that. And I'm, I'm using myself as an example for 
this beautiful thing that we get to share with the world as we heal ourselves. So we're going to stay connected to this, um, this heart center of ours that's now flaming and glowing. And I'm going to invite, share with you another goddess, which you will have met if you listened to my most recent podcast, but the podcast was about how this was for celebration. So it's definitely relevant to bring her in right now. Her name's, I believe it's pronounced Ani. Ani. She's a Celtic goddess of the sun. And today, solstice is her holiday. She's the goddess of love, fertility, and the elemental kingdom, especially the fairies. Ani was an interesting, well, there's interesting stories about her. When, you know, we talked earlier about how the darker times came over the world, she held her power with the male energies that were seeking to dominate her. And she, in multiple stories, kept her side of the street clean, but held a healthy boundary and kept her power. And in many ways, you know, I feel like that's also Mother Earth is, she's keeping her power too right now. And she, as the, the queen of the fairies, has a very special un, a relationship to the elemental kingdom. And the elemental kingdom, there's an elemental spirit responsible for each of the quote unquote elements of earth, fire, air, and water. So this goddess is a really special person to have not only for us today as solstice, but also as we're seeking to commune with all the elements. She very much looks like a fairy in this, this photo. And I'll show you one more uh, photo. I think that one's really powerful. This one's really sweet. And it's also quite powerful. Um, this shows her with her crew of light, bright fairies and other elementals. And it's cool that we get to some of the materials talk about introducing or um, connecting with the elemental kingdom. What I'm getting is that there are those of us who they know are safe people to start to commune with. And they're really ultimately here to help humanity, but um, much like everything else that was sacred got stomped on. So they're, they're, they're ready to come out with us. And this um, goddess, today is her holiday. So I wanted to share with you just briefly about her so that as we move into this next step that we can invite her and you, and so that you know who she is. So back to that light of your heart, back to that light of your heart. And we're going to head back one more time to this same place that we began our day, this sacred grove of trees. And so we already know how to do this, connecting to your heart, breathe in through your heart, breathe in the breath in your body, but also energetically into your heart and send energy and light out. So now your heart is both a ball of light and a flame. Connect to your heart again. Breathing in, and as you exhale, breathe energy and send that flame out. One more time, connect in. Bring yourself into that beautiful, sacred grotto. Breathing out. And then connect to everybody who's participating today, and this will be available for forever in the future. Whoever wants to come gather here with us, that's why this is a big grotto. So connect to all the people, all the beings, all the heart lights, the circle that we're creating. And as you breathe in, come into your heart. And as you breathe out, send light out to everybody. Past, present, future that's joining us. Inhale, breathe in all the light that was just sent to you. Bring it into your heart. Exhale, send it out. One more time, breathe it in. 
and send it out. And then, so now we've got this circle. It's a circle, but it's a sphere because we are not flat beings. We're, we're beautiful, multidimensional. So we've got the sphere of light that we've created. And the bigger sphere is all that natural world that the trees that are holding space for us, the grass beneath our feet, the earth, the warmth of the earth. And out from the trees are coming all these elemental spirits which means this goddess that we just met, goddess Annie, is here with us as we're honoring her holiday. So she's coming right into the center of the circle and all these elementals are sort of mingling with us and, and filling and fusing this beautiful circle with light. And now take a moment to just allow their light, allow that light to expand, allow the entire natural world, the trees and the grass and the earth. Breathe in, take all that in and breathe out, commune with it energetically. And so we're also adding the fairy kingdom, the elemental kingdom and this goddess, just breathing in, taking in the energy and breathing out from your heart, send light. A few more times, breathing in. Breathing out. Inhaling, breathing in all this energy, all this beautiful light is coming in. Light from the sun, light from all these sentient creatures and light from each other. Breathing out. And now, all of these beings, the trees, the earth, the grass, the elemental kingdom, this goddess, the sun, they want, they have a question for you. We've just created all this space. We've just cleared heaviness. They want to know what do you want to create? What do you want to see for yourself, for your community, for your world? So we're going to spend just a little bit of time. This is a very personal, also it's a collective. They want to know because they're here to help. So see if you can share with them. Maybe it's just a visualization that's really clear for you. Maybe it's a feeling. How can they help you create something. This is a very creative holiday. And it's this vast celebration of, of our human beingsness able to commune with all of this natural world, with all of this energetic world, with all of the energy beings. So just share with them your intention. Whatever's most on your heart, whatever most brings you joy, whatever you most want to heal, all of it. Wonderful. And now something interesting happens. The fairies are already excited and they're beginning to depart. So you can imagine these little scurrying beings excited to run off and help you make that happen. That's kind of their, that's what they do. It's another thing for us to remember that we don't have to linearly do things. We just get to invoke space and speak and then release. And this goddess is also sending her charge out to help whatever it is that you want to create. You're that powerful, she's that powerful. That's right relation. And so from your heart now, just send, breathe into your heart and as you exhale, send gratitude out in all directions for all the, all the beings, all of us gathered, all the magic that's already taken place and that will continue to take place. Inhale again, breathe in gratitude. Then as you exhale, send it out to everybody and everything, especially this goddess, Annie. Inhale, breathe in gratitude. Exhale. Send it out. One more time, inhale, breathe it in. And exhale, send it out. 
And in many of these traditions, they have a way of, you can open your eyes and feel how energized and clear you feel right now. And feel how you sort of know you don't have to do anything just yet. The way that they often close this is the invocation, we can speak together, you can speak aloud, and so it is. And I hope that now more than ever, we have a deeper understanding of what that really means. And so it is, is releasing and allowing space for all these other helping creatures, the sun, the trees, mother earth, this goddess, all of her elemental kingdom that she's in charge of. In Tibetan, they have a word, it means wind horse, R-L-U-N-T-R-A. It's what, what happens when they, they, they hang those prayer flags, they infuse every flag with an intention and then they, when they hang them up, there's this, uh, this, this, this creature known as, it's like a, a, a winged horse. It comes and it's responsible for taking those intentions and riding on the wind and taking whatever information to whatever part to make that happen. So that's that same idea of, and so it is. All right, so just coming back into your body coming back into our gathering. I, that's pretty much what I had prepared for the closing ceremony. Oh, wait, there's one more important thing. In traditional um, Wiccan culture, you invoke a circle and then you uninvoke the circle out of respect for the elements. In some other cultures, and I, the, th the practice that I like is to be grateful to everybody who's come to create this sacred circle that we've created by invoking the four directions and the four elements. Acknowledge them so we can just send gratitude to all the four directions that we've invoked. Allow them to release if their work with us is done. Invite them to stay for as long as is necessary. So it's kind of a more organic release of the sacred space that we're creating. And it allows for things to happen across time and space. So you're your own judge. We're all getting to remember our own intuition. But the final thing that I wanted to share with you was that practice, which is to sort of drop the circle or allow the circle to be re released as is in the right time. And the final thing that's coming through to share is one of the most potent things that we can lean on right now in the times when the media just wants our energy, we can lean on our intuition. And I invite you guys today and forevermore with everything that happens in the next six months. And actually we've got another six years before we really can see, see a, everything above board that's really cool. Use your intuition, trust what your gut says about every single thing. Because ultimately, that's how powerful we are. We don't need anybody else's advice. We ultimately, what we want to do, what we know we can do is just that. Yes or no, truth or fear. So just, that's kind of a, a, an aside, but I think it's, I'm just getting told to share that with you because it's really, really relevant on this powerful magical day and uh, we have got so much gifts and we're not done so all of it is a celebration and also just kind of a mid stride okay so that for me in terms of the formalness of what I wanted to share with all of you on this solstice holiday also my gratitude to everybody I'm so but for everybody gathering um, I wouldn't, I could be talking to a computer screen and talking to the tree, but it's way more magical when we all gather. And so I just want to thank every single person for joining today. And I want to invite you guys now a little bit of, I don't know if we want to call it Q and A time, or if anybody has anything they want to share, if anybody has any questions about any of the material that they just met, um, feel free to write it in the chat. Feel free to unmute yourself if you like, I'll give us a little bit of time here just to See if there's anything else that needs to come up for, for, for closure. Mm, Vilma D says, thank you for the beautiful course. I'm so grateful for such a wonderful connection to all four elements. Oh, yay. I'm grateful to have been able to make that for you guys. Uh, 
I got a deeper connection, obviously, by putting all that together. So you're totally welcome. <laughs> Anybody else? Katie B says, thank you so much. I meditated on the clouds for the air and water elements. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Kate says, thank you for the visual visualization of sending out all the fairies to help us on our journey. Yeah, when I got that, that picture really helped me with it. I've long had a relationship with fairies, but it was Goddess Ani where I was like, they're not just one or two, they're everywhere. They've just been hiding from humanity because we've been doing really scary things. <laughs> so you're welcome, Kate. Gotti says, it was a wonderful day of celebration and growth. Thank you. Yes, so this is the magic of these times. You know, it's not but for COVID, but I, I kind of like saying that because we are all a little bit more internal and, and knowing that it's time for us to do all these things that we ultimately knew we would do. It's time for us to do them. And, and now we get to gather together. So you're totally welcome, Dottie. Katie B says, I like the t-shirts in your shop too. You're welcome. Um, if anybody has any other ideas, I do have one that'll uh, become live in, I don't know, next week. It says friends with fairies, <laughs> which I thought was great. Um, so yeah, you're all very welcome. Um, and the willow tree is the perfect background. Yes. Karen says this retreat helped us make the solstice even more special and in depth. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, so that brings me, that reminds me, I wanted to suggest a couple more things that if you wanted to include, you know, we're in fire season in California, so I'm not gonna say go light a bonfire <laughs> like they used to, but light a candle, you know, the, where this is the fire element and or watch the sunset um, or just connect with the sunset today. Um, the sun is a solar deity to many cultures and you know I've come to understand that all planets and even in astrology they teach this planets carry intelligence they are their own entities the sun is its own entity and this is a celebration of that and Karen says I love the information about the salamander we've seen many of them on our land yeah salamanders are so sacred. I've, when I saw one on my place, it's a symbol of purity of a place. There's lots of symbols of that, but salamanders are pretty powerful. Okay, the clouds outside right now, my tree circle picture, good. Vilma says, I was smelling fire when connecting to the fire element. Okay, yeah, so that's also gonna happen. We're so, I'm gonna, we'll close soon enough, but I think this is, I, I love the, the things that come through. To, to, to ping off of what I said about our intuition, how ultimately um, we're going to know truth and fear. We're going to be able to go, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And you'll get to see it by whether or not your body does this or whether or not your body does this, whether or not you feel like whew, small, contracted or expanded. And then also our intuition is more powerful than any of us can ever imagine. I did a little bit of a study with a Peruvian shaman and he had something to say that kind of blew my mind, but it, it reminds me of what Vilma just said. He said, you know, you guys' modern day uh, manufactured drugs that everyone's so into, um, humans can do that. If, if you, if you want to go take a journey and, and have it be amazing and magical, you're actually wired to have all those feelings. You know, and I mentioned that feeling of ecstasy early, uh, in another part of today where I don't have any experience with the drug, but I do know what that felt like. Um, so we've got so many ways that our intuition can show us information in so many ways that we're waking up to how powerful we are and that's why you know the heart thing that i did i did a whole course on heart alchemy because spirit really told me that your heart it's not your brain we think it's our our, our thinking brain it's our heart that's the power the power spot so that also one final thing to share i um the course information goes live today i'm starting a another goddess course so we're gonna there'll be one offered every six months, but it's a 13 lunar cycle. Uh, of, it's, it's, three, it's a year long course, but there's 13 gatherings. We, we learn to cycle with the moon and, and every, every cycle has its own theme. So this first four weeks of, of, of content will be available if you wanna join. You don't have to join today. Uh, you can join next week. You know, you'll want a little bit of time 
to, to look at the content, but it's kind of in the style of what we're doing now. I use a, te a, plat a, a platform called Teachable, which makes it really easy for you to access the content. It's not on my website, but um, just keep that in mind. And then this, this is a free offering from my heart to yours, because you have to know that I get so much from um, putting this together. And like I said, like every, you know, the teacher student relationship is actually symbiotic. It's not hierarchical. That's another thing we get to remember. <laughs> so I did this because I gained from it. If anybody wants to share that nonprofit with their friends, if anybody has any ideas for the nonprofit, if anybody wants to donate, we're kind of in this very, um, I, you know, I kind of feel like we're lifting the little, the little spaceship up off the ground and kind of hovering about a little bit. So um, you're all welcome. And the whole idea of the nonprofit is that everyone participates in joy and that everyone some contribute money some contribute their energy and i think that's another thing that we get we're going to get to remember as the the year unfolds is that money is one form of prana it's very necessary in our 3d world but also we add value every day just by breathing we intuitively instinctively know that but we've forgotten about it so just want to close with that also that invitation to you to spread the good news and to join us in any way that you can so um Yes, be blessed. I'm grateful for each and every one of you and you will see all the content and all the videos um, live by this afternoon. It's worked, it's worked out really seamlessly the way this is all being able to be shared. So feel free to also share this with anybody that you think might benefit from just this, this free offering of information. All right, guys, I love you. I'm grateful for you and have a blessed wait. I can't close because I need to remind you that, oh no, I did. Light a fire, watch the sunset. Okay. Happy solstice. Tons of love. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Love you.